Well, hello everybody and welcome back to our weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. My name is Gareth Noble and I'm so excited that I can connect with all of you today. Well, we're continuing with our series uh, on fear and I know that uh, you've been blessed and I hope that you've been learning uh, something new and uh, we're going to look at part two today last week we looked at the fear of rejection and there were two rejection traps that we that we learned and the first one was that we become overly cautious because of of fear of rejection we we, we become overly cautious it's to to the extreme that we don't try anything because of of um of getting hurt and the second one is the second trap, rejection trap, was uh, we crave acceptance. We're doing things to get the acceptance of, of people. And our whole motivation is all about receiving acceptance from, from other people. And so how do we overcome these two traps? Well, there were two tr uh, principles from the Bible that we looked at. The first one is that we need to learn to say yes to pleasing God. We are God pleases. And the second one is to say no to pleasing people. And so we looked at the fear of uh, rejection. And so today we're going to carry on and we're going to look at how to overcome the fear of failure. The fear of failure. And maybe you've heard these words spoken by other people. Maybe you've heard, maybe you've said these words to yourself. Things like, I'm afraid to try. You know what? You, you'll always fail. It will never work out. You don't have what it takes. You're going to flunk. You'll fail again. Well, that's, that's a stupid idea. Don't even, don't even try it. Well, you might as well just, just give up. Well, we looked at our main scripture. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a, of a sound mind. And so we, we, we know and we understand that fear does not come from God. And God wants us to replace our fear with faith. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of fear. And I believe at the same time that there are those of you that will take a step of faith out of your comfort zone into the world of faith where you'll attempt to accomplish something that without God, it will certainly fail. But with the presence of God, God will call, call you to succeed. And so, you know, we, we, we think of these questions. What if you are not good enough? Um, what, if I, what if I don't measure up? What if, what if you try, but once again fail? Well, at one point or another, everyone fears failure that that's normal but you know what failure is overrated we we overrate failure come on as we talk about the fear of failure today let's start with the understanding that giving into this fear can cost us far more than most of us actually realize and so we're going to look at a parable today and jesus told uh, that parable in in the bible and it's going to help us to illustrate the cost of the fear of failure. I want us to conceptualize it and, and, and to show you how that, that fear of failure can actually cost you within your life. And so Jesus told the story about a man. Uh, he, was a, he was a businessman and he went on a journey and he called in three uh, workers. He called in three people. And to one man, the Bible says he gave five talents. He, he gave him finances, money. So he gave to the one five talents and to another man, he gave two talents. And then to the third one, he gave uh, one talent. And so he basically said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away for a while. I'm going to go on a business trip. I'm going on a vacation. And I want you guys, you three guys, to take care of my business. And so the first two men, they, they overcame their fear of failure. And in this area of their life, they went out and they took some risks. And they invested what they had. And they doubled their initial principle and the th but the third man was afraid of failure and so like many of us were paralyzed by by this fear and instead of taking a venture a step of faith this guy 
he played it safe. And what he did was he, he buried his talent. And when the master came back, here's how the story goes. So if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 24. And it says there, the man who had received one talent, he said, my master, I knew that you are a hard man. Verse 25. So I was afraid. He said, so I was afraid. I was afraid of failing. I, you know, I, I might let you down. I might not succeed. So I was afraid. And I went out and I hid the talent under the ground. And so you can almost sense a pride in, in, in what he did. He said, see, you know, yeah, yeah is what belongs to you. And how did this master reply? Well, did, did the master say, well done, good, good job, my, 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 my good worker. You know, you played it safe. Uh, you didn't risk anything. I'm proud of you for forgetting what, what, I, what I gave you. No, that's not how this master responded. Let's look what he said. He said, you wicked and lazy servant. That's verse 28. You wicked and lazy servant. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has who has 10 talents. And so the fear of failure paralyzed this man. And that which he guarded, that which he was trying to protect, that which he was trying to, to hold onto, onto, he ended up losing in the end. I'm reminded of Job 3.25. The Bible says, Job said, that which I fear has come upon me. That which I, 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 I hope wouldn't happen, it, it's, it's happening now. It's, it's, it's happening in my life. And um, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit, spirit of fear. Hallelujah. And uh, I heard a story about a man who owned a whole lot of monkeys. Hallelujah. And one day he decided that he was going to try an, an experiment with, with, these, with these monkeys. And so he locked them up in a, in a room and he took this big pole and he put a pole in, in the middle of this, this, this room with these four monkeys inside. And at the top of this, this pole, he put a nice, nice uh, a big bunch of delicious looking bananas. Hallelujah. And one little monkey, so he put them in there, close it up. And one little monkey, you know, he, look, he looked up and he saw these uh, delicious, delicious bananas. And he decided, hmm, I want some of these bananas. And so he scurried up this pole as fast as he, fast as he could. And then when the owner saw it, he took um, a hose pipe with, with cold water. And he, he blasted cold water. He poured cold water on this poor little unsuspecting monkey. And so monkey came down and then not not a long time after that another little monkey he saw the bananas and he decided hey i'm i'm gonna give this a go i'm gonna try and so he scurried up there as well and he went to this the top and then what did the owner do he sprayed he sprayed him with water he came down and after several attempts all four monkeys they decided that you know what it's it's not worth the cost we're gonna we're gonna stop stop trying and then one day the owner took one of the four monkeys out and he brought in a new monkey. And so when the new monkey was in there, he, he looked up, he saw these, these delicious bananas. And then the new monkey, he started going up this pole. And uh, you know what the, the three other monkeys did? Yes, you've guessed it. They pulled this poor little monkey down. And the monkey was, you know, he was looking at what's wrong with these other monkeys. And so he tried again and quickly the other three monkeys, they pulled him right, right, right back down again. And so the owner thought that this was very, very interesting. And so what he did was one by one, he replaced all four of the, all this stage, all three of the original monkeys and with, with monkeys that have never known known the the rules so he replaced all of those monkeys and after he had four brand new monkeys in that room he noticed that none of the monkeys would try to go up and get the bananas and none of them the monkeys actually knew why 
they were afraid to try. And so, well, what is, what is the, 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 the point of my story? Well, whenever you sense God calling you to take a step of faith or, or to take a risk, you can be assured that people, and oftentimes people that you love, will tell you why it won't work they'll they'll encourage you with 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 words like you know what it, it's never gonna work you're you're no good you failed the last time you know i tried that and, and it failed that's a that's a stupid idea you you might as well just you know gareth just just give it up don't don't try you you're gonna fail and here's the thing don't allow someone else's failure or someone else's fear to make a monkey out of you <laughs> all right so don't let someone else's past talk you out of god's future for you come on now and so we're many times we're afraid of failing because of what people are going to think of you and because of what people um, are saying to you and so what is the thing that that you are are, are, are fearing you know what is it that the the fear of failure for for you what is that one thing that you, you know god is calling you to but you're afraid of what people are going to think you're listening to what people are are saying to you for some people it might be uh to start that that business you know god is god has been talking to you for a, for a long time and you're thinking to yourself you know what uh, what if the the finances don't come through what you know what are people going to think if 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 I, if it doesn't work out you know for others it might be a mom uh, or, or parents and you know that god is calling you to homeschool your 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 children and you're thinking you know i don't know if i can if i can teach i don't know if i'm good enough to to um teach and 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 to educate my my children for some it might be afraid of of giving the tithe and being obedient to god and worshiping god with 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 the 10 percent and you're thinking oh you know what what happens if i don't have enough money at the end of the month for others it might be that you are the the man in in the house and god is calling you to be the spiritual leader that he that he wants you to to be and and maybe you might be uh, thinking to yourself well, what if i'm not good enough what if i'm I, I make a mistake what if i try to teach the bible and you know what it doesn't it doesn't work out well every one of us fears failure there is always some sense of, of of a fear of failure but you know what god has not given us a spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind and so the next few moments i want to share with you three thoughts that will empower you to overcome this fear of failure that we have and so the first thing is that failure is not final failure is not final unless you are jesus christ or you don't try anything you will fail don't fear it embrace it as part of the growing process towards success hallelujah i said just now that that failure is is overrated in james chapter 3 verse 2 he said the bible says we all stumble every single one of us stumbles in many ways if anyone is never at fault james says then he is a perfect man the matter of the fact is we all stumble we'll all fail we all make mistakes at some point or another the the trick is to allow yourself to feel the disappointment but not the disapproval you can feel the disappointment but not the disapproval why well because failure is an event never a person i love that failure is an event it's never a person and so just because you failed financially it doesn't mean that you are now a failure for the rest of your of your life just because you failed in uh in a relationship that relationship went sour it doesn't mean that that you are a failure and when i look in the bible i see a man called peter peter had great success but then he also had he had times of great failure and so one of the most effective men in all of scripture who failed as as often as as anybody else and so if we look in the bible you know peter he, he was known for 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 great success and great failure and one day he said to jesus you know what jesus 
I'm your, I'm your, I'm your man. Everyone else, you know what, they've, they've let you down. But you know what, I've, I've got your back, Jesus. I will never deny you. I will, I'll, I will never uh, uh, run away from, 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 from your, your mission and, 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 and the calling that, you, that you've placed on, on our lives. And so what happened? Satan said to Jesus, do you mind if I test, test uh, uh, Peter? Do you mind if I see, uh, see if, if, if he has what it, what it takes? Do I have permission to sift him as wheat? The Bible said. And then Jesus said, yes, take, take your best shot. Jesus, he, he allowed it. And then he said something very interesting. And Jesus said, after you have overcome this, he said, Peter, I'm going to pray for you that from this point forward, your faith does not fail. Well, what happened? We know that Peter denied Jesus three times. He failed big time. And what did Jesus do? Well, he just loved him through the failure. And Peter experienced a, a, a huge setback, but God used it as a huge setup. Hallelujah. God first did something in Peter before he did something through Peter. And that's very similar to, to what we looked at Elijah. Remember Elijah? God did something in him. He did a deep work in him before uh, God could do something great through him. And this is what happened to, to Peter. Peter had a major setback, but God used it as a, as a comeback. Hallelujah. So Peter, who failed temporarily, was the man that God chose to succeed on the day of Pentecost. And he led something like 3,000 people, and that was the birth of the New Testament church. In one, in one day, God used Peter in a mighty and a powerful way. And so just because you fail at something doesn't mean that you are a failure. Here's the thing. You will fail. It's part of, of growing towards success. And so the th thought number one is that don't be afraid of it. F a failure is not final. It's part of walking towards success. There are going to be times when you fail. In Romans 5 verse 3 it says, We can rejoice when we run into problems. And what else? trials when we hit the wall you know when we fail when we have problems and roadblocks we can rejoice we know that these problems and trials are what the bible says that they are good for us they are doing something in us hallelujah so don't fear it thought number two is that you can overcome fear you can by the spirit of god by the words of your testimony and the blood of the lamb you will overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony praise god proverbs 24 verse 16 says i love the scripture though a righteous man fails seven times he rises again though a righteous man fails seven times he rises again what happens when we get knocked down well we stand back up. We rise again. When we stumble, then we get back up. When we fall, we get back up. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so let's redefine failure. Failure is the price that we pay on the road to God's success. And so I love the story about a guy. He, uh, he would teach pottery. He had a, a pottery class, you know, when they, they made the, these pots out of clay. And every year... Uh, he had done this for many years. He'd, he'd take the class and in the beginning of the year, he would divide the class right down, down the middle and he would say, okay, this part of the class, this half, your assignment for the next three hours is all of you, all I want you to do is focus on quantity, okay? I want you to make 100 clay pots. So your focus is, is quantity. Focus on, on, on making 100 clay pots. And so the other half, this half, for the next three hours, your goal is to simply make one clay pot. I want you to focus on quality. So this half, I want you to make quantity, make a hundred clay pots. This half, it's all about the quality. Make the, the best perfect uh, 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 pot. And I only want you to make to make one. And so every year in every class, the, the the teacher would, would prove his point. And at the end of the time, 
those who focused on quality would always make one and those who focused on quantity would always make a make hundred or so. And there would always be about a dozen or so that were better from the quantity group than the quality group. So the one that made the, the hundred one, they just had to focus on, on quantity and not quality. They made 12 or so pots that were just as good or even there were some 12 that were better than the ones that, that actually focused on the, on the quality. And so obviously, naturally, these students, they would ask this, um, this teacher, well, why is, why is that? And the professor would say this. He would say, one of the biggest mistakes that we make is that we overanalyze. These are his words. We overprepare. We, we work on a committee and we're hesitant to risk failure. And then he'd talk to this group and he'd say, you know what? The first pot that you made was ugly. Okay, and the second one was 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 also ugly. He's talking about the, the 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 quantity group, and then the third one was not very good. So, but but each time you made one, you learned something new, and before long, you were learning so much that the quality of work just started improving, and you succeeded because you didn't fear failure. The fear of failure was taken out of the equation, and every time they actually failed. They learned something new and they were improving. And every time they made a new pot, they improved. They learned something different. They learned something new. And then they, they, it was just part of design. They became better and better and better. And so the point is, is that you, when you get to a place where you're not afraid to fail, but you're failing forward, you make a mistake, but then you learn from the mistake. And then all of a sudden you don't stop. Uh, you, 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 you're not afraid anymore. Of failing and just because you fail at something don't give up Galatians chapter chapter 6 verse 9 says let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up at the proper time you will reap the harvest if you don't give up and it doesn't matter what happens to you it, it what what matters is what happens in you and God may be do something in you to prepare what God wants to do through you. Hallelujah. So number one, the first thought is, is that failure is not final. Failure isn't final. And number two is you can overcome fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear and you can overcome the fear of failure. Number three is that you've got to take steps of faith. You have to take steps of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For whoever, who, whoever draws near to God must believe that He exists and that He is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. You cannot play it safe and please God. You cannot bury your, your talent and please God. The master wasn't happy when he took the talent and he buried it. And some, you know, when we look at Peter, when he walked on water, some people say, you know what, Peter failed when he, when he walked on, on, on the water. Well, if you don't know the story, Jesus walked on water. He said to the 12 in the boat, who wants to come to, to me and, and give it a try? And so Peter tried. He took a few steps, was walking on the water. And then the Bible says he looked away from Jesus. He looked at the, the wind and the waves. And the Bible says he started to sink. And I've heard uh, preachers say that, you know what, he failed in that day. No, he didn't fail. You know what? You know who failed? The 11 others who stayed in the boat. Those, who, those are the ones that failed. Hallelujah. You see, Peter took a risk. Peter took a step of faith and he got out of out of the boat and you know what the, the boat represents our place of comfort it represents the place of 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 security it's it's what it's what you know it's where you it's where you're comfortable at and a lot of people are are living inside their boat and because the boat is a safe place for them and you know what it's the the miracles don't happen inside the boat the miracles happen on the water 
and Jesus was on the water. You see, when you want to walk in the supernatural, you've got to be in, in, in the faith realm. And Jesus, he, you know, he's walking on the water. That's where the miracles happen. It doesn't happen when you're, when you're in, in, the, in, in your comfort zone. It doesn't happen in your, in your safe place. And a lot of people, they're living in, in, in the boat. But Peter, he took a step of faith. And he got out of that which he was comfortable with. And he dared to walk on to walk on on the water and so peter stepped out and you cannot play it safe and please god you see a lot of people they're trying they're holding on to the boat and they're trying to walk on on the water at the same time that's not going to happen you've got to let go of the boat to be able to walk in the miracles you got to let go of your crutch you got to let go of your security you got to let go of your safety and take and take some faith risks come on now you, you know, so to, if you want to start that business, if you want to become that, that, that um, homeschooling parent, if you want to start that new relationship, if you want to go to the new level, you see, walking on the water talks about new beginnings. It talks about miracles. It talks about the new wine. You, 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 you can't uh, live in, in the comfort zone and expect miracles to happen there. It's not how it works. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so faith without works is dead. So you've got to actually take a step of faith to walk in the mirac miraculous. And for some of us, this is our greatest fear, is failure. And if you let it overtake you, it will cost you more than you can ever imagine. And your greatest fear, failure, will lead you to the greatest pain. And what is that? That is regret. You never want to wake up one day and say to yourself, what, you know, what if I took that step of faith? Well, what could have happened? You know, what should have happened? Well, what would have been if I wasn't afraid to try? And a lot of people are afraid to try because of failure. But when you understand that failure is part of the process, that failure is simply um, a step closer to success, you will realize that failure is overrated and in acts chapter 5 peter again preaching he you know he got he, he was preaching he but then he got beat up he got thrown into jail he got out he preached again he got he got beaten up thrown into jail and then the sahendra they said you know what we've we've got to stop this man and his team these guys are out of control these guys are radical you know we've got to somehow come up with with a plan to stop to, to stop these guys. But then a very wise Pharisee named Gamaliel, he stepped forward and he gave this preach. And he said in Acts chapter 5, verse 38, I love this. He says, Therefore, in this present case, I advise you to leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activities of human origin, in other words, if, if their purpose is of man, it's, it's going to fail. But... If it is from God, if what they are doing is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. And here's the thing. When you're working in, walking in God's purpose, in God's plan, when you're walking in God's dream, when you're winning souls and making disciples, when you are winning the lost, when you are preaching the gospel, when you are doing what God has called you to do, you know what? You will be unstoppable. Because when it comes from God, just like this man, Gamaliel, Gamaliel, he, he, he understood something very, very powerful. He said, listen, if their purpose is from God, you can do what you want, but you're not going to stop, stop God's purpose and plan for these men. Hallelujah. And so we need to learn to take a step of faith. We got to get out of the boat. We got to believe God and take a faith risk. If it's your own idea, you're going to sink. But God will help you overcome. If it's of God, if it's a God idea, no person will ever be able to stop you. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you today. Number one, failure is not final. Number two, you can overcome. And number three, you got to take steps of faith. Praise God. You can overcome the fear of failure. I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. 
And as usual, I want to uh, put my faith with you as we close off this broadcast with, with a prayer. Why don't you pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Forgive us for where we have allowed the fear of failure to consume us. Forgive us for where we have made decisions based on fear. But Lord, we commit to being people of faith today. We commit to getting out of the boat and walking on the water. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you cancel, you break every spirit of fear that is trying to control us. Break the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that as we step out of our comfort zone, as we look unto you as the author and the perfecter of our faith, as we look to you as the one who has overcome this world, we thank you that we can walk in the victory, that we can walk in the miracles, signs and wonders, that we can walk in the supernatural. Thank you, Jesus, that as we, att- that as we go forward, that as we at- attempt new things, that as we apply for new jobs, as we, as we open up businesses, as we, as we um, embark on, on new relationships, as we go out and begin new things, that your favor and your blessing will rest upon us. Lord, let us not be fearful, but Lord, let us step out in faith. Let us step out in, in, the, in, in, in the deep. Let us step out in the area of faith. So we thank you, Lord, for this breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you, church. I hope that you've been blessed today. And I look forward to, to seeing you at the, at the services where Pastor Dill is going to share uh, powerful uh, messages with us once again and to pray for you at the end of the service. And so I'll also uh, look forward to spending time with you next week and enjoy part three of our series. God bless you. We'll see you next time.